yourselves together. Right. You stand up and live your life. Right. You get yourselves together. Right. Hands up, hands up. The views and opinions expressed in the following program are those of the hosts and guests, and not necessarily those of the staff or management of Worldwide Digital Broadcasting Corporation. And this is the Rise Above Show, formerly from Grief to Relief Show. I am Joe Peroni. Heidi Mancini. And you want to... And this is who? Alan Childs. He's a legendary drummer. Legendary drummer. And who are you the, the, the drummer for again? So everybody knows. Oh, uh, Stephen Scott Orchestras. Uh. <laughs> 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 you guys. <laughs> How about uh, Debbie Gibson? Debbie Gibson. Yeah. She, she uh, we went to some countries that other tours didn't go. <laughs> That's what I think about that. <laughs> and some kind of famous guy, David Bowie, you're the drummer for? Yeah, I did some time with him. Yeah? Did some time the with David. Glass Spiders tour? Glass Spider tour. And uh, uh, Peter Julia Frampton Lennon. was a guitar player, right? Who? Peter Frampton. Peter Frampton. Oh my God, yeah. he's my favorite. I told Joe, <laughs> Peter Frampton, Steve Perry, they were my two, my two guys. And who did I say the third one was? I don't know. Uh, oh, Oh, Van Halen, Eddie Van Halen. Eddie Van Halen. Oh, but he wow. was not up there with those two. But oh my God, those Peter Frampton, and then Joe took me to see him in concert a few years ago, and he had no hair. That's right. And he, goes, and you know he had the, great hair. When and he I came out on stage, <laughs> and I went, "Where? No." And he goes, "He's bald. He has no hair." I go, "Oh my God, that's what I love yeah. that long hair." I know. I have a great hair story. You do <laughs> tell us. All right. <laughs> We were at the Sunset Marquee in L.A. That's a whole nice whole rock and roll hotel, but uh, high end. And uh, we just did a TV show. We taped a TV show, and this is with David Bowie, and Peter Frampton was on guitar, mm -hmm. along with Carlos Alomar. And we went swimming. Uh, after the TV show taping, we went, hung out by the pool, ordering food, and we went swimming. And Peter dove into the pool now, we had makeup on from the TV show, and, oh, no. and they sprayed his hair. So it, it was this stuff, I'll never forget it. Maybe you know. Focus 21. Focus, yeah, it's like stiff. Yeah. Stiff. It's <laughs> stiff can be. Yeah. So he probably came out and it was like this, molded to his, the top of his head. His hair didn't, it didn't change. No. His hair was here, and then he dove, came up, his the hair, hair was, was still, still there. <laughs> Thank you, Focus 21. <laughs> Thank you, Focus 21. They don't make it anymore. Uh, that stuff was like lacquer. Are you still using it? Uh, no, but I, I looked online for it. Oh, you did. Recently. <laughs> oh, my God. I can't. <laughs> Me too. That's funny. I mean, the last time I used it was 1987. I said, oh, my God. I don't think they make it. They I wonder if they still it. make it. And I, I looked online. And, and they, they do. They do. Oh, my God. I don't believe it. <laughs> Well, that's good. It's like Aquanet. Cool. Remember Aquanet? Yeah. That was the this other was one. This was way stronger. Yeah, this was like, <laughs> it was like you, once you sprayed it, there was no moving it. No so you moving. better make sure that's the style you wanted. Exactly. Because it was not going anywhere. You could be in a hurricane. It won't move. No. <laughs> it would go like this. Your whole head, your whole hair would go like this. And your head would be straight. <laughs> I remember. Yeah. So you also saw Peter Townsend. Now, okay, so, so did we, right? But we saw him from like the audience. Oh, you recently were talking about Yeah, at the uh, Caesars. Yes. Caesars Palace. So we're there. Actually, you were in, hanging out with him, though. I hung out with him. Yeah. I so him. he's like one of my idols. So tell me what that was like. Oh, well, he's one of my idols, too. And uh, I had the opportunity to work with him on the Who's Tommy hmm. back in the 90s. And we kind of made friends. Cool. And... Uh, Whenever they're around, or if I'm in the town they're in, I, I call Pete's uh, personal assistant and say, hey, I'm in town. I'd love to see the band. I'd love to see Pete. And they, <laughs> they hook it up for me. All right. And uh, Heidi wanted to talk to you about uh, oh, who was it? I have a bone to pick with you. I saw a picture <laughs> of you with Steve Perry that Joe gave me to, to announce our show today, and I'm really upset with you. What I but do? I think that was way before I met you that you had that picture taken with him. He's like my all-time, him and Peter Frampton are my two favorites. But Steve Perry, Journey, he was my, my favorite. 
Well, that picture was taken the night I saw Pete, which was just a couple uh, months ago. Ah. Uh, oh, my God. I but, I mean, I'm not anymore. really friends with Steve Perry. He just happened to be backstage. I'm not friends with him either, but if he just happened to be backstage, <laughs> I, would be ba I would be getting my picture taken. Uh, next time. That's, I'm, just, I'm just kidding you. I'm just kidding you. But, yeah, when we went to, I went to see, Joe took me to see, did you take me to see him? No. Oh, well, I no, don't he say didn't. that. He's no, really I, I, good I got you tickets, but I skipped out. He skipped on out. It. I my sent friend you with Dolly a friend. Because she totally lost Journey, <laughs> and we had a group picture taken because we went backstage. And the closest I got to Steve Perry was his drummer. He was the original drummer and one of his guitar players, and that was it. Oh, wow. And the singer they have now is there, and he's really good. You know, he's got a great voice, but it's still not Steve Perry. Oh yeah, he so, does a good. But he does a great drummer. job. You close yeah. your eyes, you and think you, it's you him, go, right? it's him. But as soon as you open your eyes, you go. Oh, it's not Steve Perry. Yeah, I'm hearing he might even sing better than Steve Perry at this point. I think Probably. Steve Perry was having problems. His, he was having some vocal problems, I heard. Yeah. And he, I asked him, like, what's happening? Are you going to release an album? And he said, yeah, yeah, it's just about done. And, and, hmm. then, and then someone else in the room said to me, He's been saying that for 20 years. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Probably. Yeah, pretty much. So, okay, so you're a legendary drummer, right? You've been around for a long... Yes, you are. You're not going to say it. You play with Rod There's Stewart, too, right? He's been around a long time, Joe. Julie, Julian you Lennon also, right? That's another Julian, one. Julian, uh, <laughs> that's uh, great memories playing with Julian. He's a real good guy. And huh. right now he's doing a lot of things for the planet. Uh, hmm. With water, all, you know, trying to just make sure everyone has water and... He's uh, basically a photographer now. He still does music. Huh. In fact, he's building his new studio. He lives in like the south of France. Hmm. But he's building a new studio, but he's really into photography lately, in the last few years. I'm sure and, he's good at that, and too. And he's really good. Hmm. Really good. Awesome. And I saw him... Well, he takes it. It's his mother. Couple, yeah. I saw him a couple months ago. His mom ago. was an artist, right? No, no, but the real nice lady. Confused. Yoko was an Yoko. Artist. I got confused there just for a second. Yeah, yeah. yeah Cynthia, his mother, his, his mother's Cynthia, mm -hmm. and she recently passed away. And she, I met her. She was really a beautiful person. Wow. And, yeah. She passed away. She must have been young. Well, I guess around seventy. That's still kind of about young, John's though, age. Considering yeah. today, people live a long. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's kind of young, I think, but. Mm -hmm. I, I, I almost said it, but I'm going to say it. I, 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 it what, are you, what are you going to say? I think Trump is 70. Yeah, he is, he actually. Is. Yeah. Uh, and his fake comb-over. His comb-over that goes like this, and it swings yeah. it around, and he wraps it around his head like a turban. It's like, I hope that now that he's president, he gets some shit done to that hair because it's it's a, it's I, disgusting. As I a have hairstylist, the greatest, I go, you've got to be kidding me. I have the greatest picture of the wind picking the whole thing uh, up. Uh, he must have been having that Focus 21 spray. <laughs> Yeah, he has the Focus 21. He's the one that's buying it. He bought it all. He bought it all. <laughs> so you were surprised, huh? That he won, I mean. Oh, I was surprised. And, yeah. And, you know, I'm not like that much of a political guy, but I got a sinking feeling in my stomach. Yeah. It really, like... I think I broke out in rashes and all kinds of shit. <laughs> oh my God. I mean, it was like, I was like, no, it really, really got me for like a 24 hours. Like I was, is this true? Is this true? And you know, there's nothing you could do now, uh, but uh, hope for the best. And if things get really bad, it'll go to the streets and protests, and uh, mm. I'll be protesting if need be. Mm. Awesome. Well, they, we've been saying for a long time there's going to be a civil war in this country because there's uh -huh. so much um, hate being perpetuated. And he's such an awesome role model for everybody because of the way he lives his own life. He, he, you know, people could say what they want about Obama and that he's this and that, but a man that treats women the way that he does, he probably cheats on his current wife now. He's, you know, he's not the model person that you want to look up he's to. He's not presidential. He's not presidential. And, you know, to me, it's just kind of, looking at him, you kind of go, this is kind of crazy. He's a reality TV guy. Hmm. And, a, and not that great a businessman. No. Uh, that's true. But he fit right into the business model as far as uh, social media goes, too. Whoever his marketing that's what people did were. It. Whoever his marketing people were, they, they, they did a really good job building, making him building him up and getting him out there, getting his name out there, 
and we see that all the time on Instagram. There's people that are really no, they're not that important, but because they get followers, because they know how to plug, and f it's fake. It's fake media. Yeah. And but, what about, it's like, to me, <laughs> it started with, I'm, I'm half kidding, with Jerry Springer. I mean, yeah. no, but it's kind of true. Mean? Yeah. It's like, it. when I first saw the show, I'm like, how could they have these kind of people talking like this to each other? And that became normal. It was so low class. Mm -hmm. Like, how could yeah. people talk like that to each other? And it kept growing. And it's like, even on the internet, like, and the reality shows, like, uh, the Jersey Shore, whatever, mm. uh, it's, it's like, it's the more smart. insulting you are, right, and argumentative, and, and revengeful, and vindictive kind of things, the more numbers you get. Mm -hmm. It's true. And, right. and, and it got, that's kind of like normal. I don't know where, where it, it started, but I think Trump cashed in on that. Mm -hmm. So yeah, the more he insulted people and got bad press, he got higher numbers. But when you saw it, when, but Alan, when you think about it, there's so many um, classless people. There's a lot of great people, and there's a lot of awesome people that we know that Joe and I know that are great people. But there's a lot of people out there that have no class, and they're they don't have good language skills, and they they would like somebody like him because they don't have to really rise above their the name of our show. They don't have to rise above their own inadequacies. I mm -hmm. can act like a low life now and it's cool because the president of the United States doesn't have any class. So great. Now I don't have to have anything. Did there's you, no bar there's no there's no uh, there's no standards. standards. Did you see the movie Idiocracy? Yes. No. no. John, you want, can you jump in for a second and tell yeah. us about Idiocracy for a second then? But it's kind of funny that the president ends up being like a UFC fighter, right? <laughs> and he's this low class piece of garbage. Tell us about Idiocracy for a second. Idiocracy is about the dumbing down of America. I mean, literally, the dumbing down of America. And, and, uh, uh, there you go. Terry, <laughs> Terry Crews. <laughs> Come on, get over Terry there. Terry Crews. Terry Crews. You know who Terry, Terry Crews mm. is? Okay. He plays the president. And, and he is, uh, just absolutely, uh, duh. <laughs> <laughs> with muscles, uh, he is he is the perfect example of what I thought Joe was when I first met him. Yeah, that's true. Man. Yeah, <laughs> I remember that. And, and, and uh, the difference is when Joe opened his mouth, I thought, "Holy shit, this guy's got a brain." <laughs> yeah. When 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 Terry Crews opened his mouth, he's like, "No." Mm. So and and it was basically because of a conglomerate of businesses, and um, they had like uh, this product, like kind of like Gatorade that was synthetic and everybody was drinking it and all the water was used to make this stuff all the plants were dying and everybody was you know dying off and uh what's his name what's the guy's name owen what not owen wilson luke wilson oh i know who you mean it's, not, it's, it's yeah, yeah anyway, the character had had come from the the past time travel into the future yeah they were a the most average people right but then they came back like a hundred years later, yeah, Maya and they were they, and they were the most intelligent people on the face of the planet. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's a dumbing down. Of and and, America, and he, right? he he's telling uh, the the these uh, conglomerates are telling the people that water you know water your plants or water all the vegetables and the farms and shit like that with this stuff that they make, and there was absolutely no nutritional value at all. All the plants were dying, and he comes in and says, well you know sprinkle some water on it. And, and they're going, no, 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 you know, that won't work. So anyway, just, so that, that's, that's what our future is. Yeah, so, yeah. You got the idea. so it's very strange. Like, and, I, and I wore this shirt just for you, man. This is my psychedelic circus shirt. <laughs> but here, I want to say one thing about all this, too, that, that the, you know, I was trying to figure out if it's a generational thing when I was, you know, I would like to see what the demographics are about who voted for who, if you could ever get those numbers. But there's a lot of younger people, though, that are in their 20s and 30s that are pretty smart. So you can't even say that... The whole generation is 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 getting dumb because you know what? A lot of the people that voted, I think, for him were in my age group. You know, fifties, sixties. You know, so that says something too. They were their thirties, forties. You know, that age group there, and a couple. And I have older clients too that I do their hair. They're in their seventies. They voted for him. So, I don't know. I have information pertaining to that. Oh, you do? Yes, and it was an article about the future of this country. Mm -hmm. and the, the, the voting future of this country. And they had a map of the U.S. up and, and basically 
from 18 to 35, the mm -hmm. people 18 to 35, who voted in this election. Mm -hmm. There were only three states out of the entire U.S. that were red. All the rest were blue. Hmm. I, I so saw that, yeah. You see that? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So what that tells me is if we get through this, <laughs> that's, our, that's our voting block. There you so, go. Okay. Yeah, you know how hard that is to say to people? Like, I did two shows on that, and I get death threats, right? Because it, it's kind of true that as your intelligence level goes up, the more likely you are to be liberal. And like you said, you probably most of your friends are liberal, right? They're artists. They, they can most see them, things yeah. and hear things that I have not heard yet, right? You create. That's an amazing thing. I think that's why I kind of lean towards that liberal side to, to start with. Mm -hmm. Well, we want to talk. So, let's talk about um, not not yeah, politics. politics. Yeah, we can move from that. <laughs> so, the so, legendary drummer. So you've obviously had a lot of success, right? And people might think, oh yeah, it's really kind of easy. You know, you can just kind of pick whoever you want to pick at this point. I would think. But tell me about some times where you had a miss, like you. Say tried out for somebody, you jammed audition. with somebody, oh, and yeah. audition, audition, and didn't make it, or someone who said, you know what, join our group, and you said, I don't think you're going anywhere, and then all of a sudden you're like driving down the street and hear them on the radio. <laughs> yeah, Have you yeah. had any of those? Yeah, right. I remember auditioning for Billy Idol. Hmm. And I remember, I I really didn't study his music that hard because I was hearing it all the time anyway but I remember I went to the ride symbol and he looked at me <laughs> like oh my god why do you just go to the ride symbol <laughs> and, I, and, I'm, and I guessed at that point he didn't say that to me but that was the look and and I was. <laughs> this is just. <laughs> Do I hit it again? And I, I uh, was saying in my mind to him, "It's the chorus." You know, you know, so, you know. I played hi hat on the verse, and now we're in the chorus. Uh, <laughs> oh my god! So how'd they go over? Well, not good because his face said to me, "You just blew it." <laughs> and, and and I knew I did. I Over knew. that, yeah, he, he couldn't say switch it. No, <laughs> that was, was it. No, that was it. Like I think I finished the song. They might have been polite, and I did one more song, but yeah. uh, <laughs> I never heard from them. Again. Yeah, but but oh, look, but the thing is, it was meant to be. It was meant to be. Is there like a is there really a right way of left right? It doesn't matter. No, no. On his particular song, <laughs> it might have been White Wedding. Uh, uh, that oh. the drummer on the record probably stayed on the hi hat the whole song. Oh, okay. Okay. A lot of times, like for instance, Stuart Copeland from the Police, the verses are on the hi hat, you know, and then he opens up the the big chorus, the hook, yeah. and usually it's on a bride symbol or something. Who would have known? You I know. didn't know that was so technical, with drummer. Well, <laughs> I just thought you guys went out there and went. Well, that sounds good. No, there's <laughs> there's definitely a formula a, sometimes, you know. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So Billy Idol, who's not. I mean, yeah. okay, he has well, one song, all right, maybe two. He has a, he has a few. He has but, a couple. But, a few. but the good thing about <laughs> failing at that point, and then failing for him, anyway, uh, if I would have taken that gig, if he would have accepted me, I would have lost out on Bowie. Oh, there you go. Yeah, I think you won on that one. Yeah, I love that. But how did you feel, though, when you walked out of that audition? Not though? good. <laughs> uh, and it happened one other time. All right. In my career. Uh, Joe Jackson. Who's Joe Jackson? I remember Joe Jackson. Remember Looks sharp. Who is he? He's a British, very tall singer. Uh, he had a few hits in the 80s, uh, one or two big albums. I never heard of him. And it's pretty cool music, too. Oh, um, okay. I have to look that uh, up when we get out of here. And Joe you Jackson. know what? <laughs> and don't laugh. I, I think it's the same reason. <laughs> you didn't learn. <laughs> I, you get the right. I think I went to the ride and they they let they lost it. Like, what is he going to the ride for? You know, I was like, oh. that's all it takes, huh? That was Just it. one. Just to the right. Just to the right. And then there right. were there were things I never auditioned for 
on the other mm. side of the coin right. that I just got called for. Hmm. You know, so it evens out. Hmm. Uh, it evens out in ego wise, you know. Like, <laughs> you know, <laughs> you, know you, you, you leave Billy Idol and Joe Jackson with your tail between your legs, you know. Oh, and you ever think shit. you're going to get another audition after that? Or oh yeah, yeah, but you don't. You know, so you don't doubt yourself. No, but you do feel a little bad for a few minutes. You know, it's like, oh man, I, know. I thought I could easily. Yeah, do Joe that, Jackson. You know. <laughs> but uh, yeah, things evened up. Did you, huh. ever, did you take lessons? Yeah, I took yeah. lessons, but way after the fact. Way I already started playing. I must have been playing ten years or at least, and I took lessons not to learn how to play because I learned how to play on my own. I took lessons to learn how to read music. Hmm. That's funny you say that because my daughter took drums, and she was a good reader. Like she could read music like nothing. Wow! But she didn't have the um, let loose creative. Like she was very technical, her drum teacher. Oh, what was his name? I can't remember his name now. He used to say, if she would just let loose, he goes, but she's so technical. Mm. He goes, she reads music. A little stiff, maybe. Like, way stiff. Yeah. Like everything was right to the, you know. Mm -hmm. So as a drummer, you gotta go crazy once in a while. Yeah, I think there's a uh, there's advantages to learning on your own in the beginning, because mm -hmm. uh, you either have it or you don't. And if you could do it on your own and you're successful, I think that's different than someone that get. That the parents say, "Hey, do you want to play? You want to play drums? Okay, we'll get you a teacher," and they start learning drums from a teacher immediately. I mean, though that can be great. I think when you learn on any instrument on your own first, there's something a little special about that. You're exploring, right? You yeah, would think? I think, and you're learning on your own. Hmm. Uh, there's something to be said for. I think it's cool that you play the drums. I always wanted to be a drummer. Joe likes the guitar. He's pretty good on the guitar. He no, he not in front of is, a real musician. Just, say like, that. So that's not whatever. true. <laughs> but I'm just saying. I think that that's like one of the instruments. If I could ever that in a piano. Mm. I love the sound of a piano, but I always want to learn just beat on a drum. Just piano. Like, you hear about that thing Trump did with? No, sorry. <laughs> what did he do? He did some of the piano. What did he do with it? Well, actually, he uh, uh, he ordered a few hundred pianos for all his casinos, and. Didn't is this true? Is this, this is a true. Joke? <laughs> <laughs> and he didn't pay the bill. Well, he didn't Are pay we it in full. And the, no. the the guy had to get the, the the store owner had to get it from a wholesale guy. He had to pay the wholesale guy to get the pianos, and then he got stiffed, and he, he had a, like bankruptcy. His family, you yeah. know, was, was starving. Oh my god! Uh, I've heard a few of those type of stories. Yeah. Uh, uh, I, I didn't mean to do that. <laughs> Why'd you politics. Do that, Alan? Politics. It was politics. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> so, <okay. laughs> tell me about Bruce Springsteen. Yeah, I auditioned for Bruce back in the. Yeah, you kind of left days. that out. That's yeah. a big one to leave out. Yeah. You, you remember Joe Jackson, but you yeah. don't remember Bruce Springsteen. I, Come on, I, man. I auditioned. <laughs> yeah, but that that was different. It wasn't. Uh, that one was a girl I knew that worked at uh, CBS Records. Hmm. who I grew up with in Canarsie, Brooklyn. She ended up working for CBS, and she called me one day, and she knew I was a working drummer. I haven't seen her in years. And she said, Alan, we have an artist on our label, Bruce Springsteen, he's looking for a drummer. He, would you like to go down? And I said, okay, you know, I was pretty busy at the time, like just doing <laughs> sessions and then- and was, I was pretty you know. busy. But Bruce Springsteen I, calls, I'm kind of busy. Yeah, but he wasn't the big name that he, ended up being. This yeah. is right after Greetings at Asbury Park. Okay. So he had a following and, and critical acclaim, but uh, he wasn't like a huge artist yet, and I heard of him. And I went and I played, and it was good. It was okay. And, uh, <laughs> it was okay. <laughs> and I got called back. Uh, right. You know, after the auditions, and th th later that day or the next day, I got a call from his people, and then they said, hey, they Bruce liked you and two other guys. And I said, uh, you know what, uh, I'll pass. You passed on that? You yeah. didn't even go uh, back? I didn't go back. If you just stuck with it, you could have ended up on The Tonight Show. <laughs> that's, true. that's true. Yeah. Uh, the, and it happened again. It happened again, now that you reminded me of these situations. Oh, go back, go back. <laughs> See, Max so you're, Weinberg. You're bringing, up old, you're bringing up sad <laughs> stuff, Joe. Are, are you, are you, you're better than Max Weinberg. I would never say that. You wouldn't say it, but no. would everybody else say it? I don't know. 
With David Bowie saying it. I have no idea. He's so humble. <laughs> I can't get no, you to so say anything. He's so humble, he won't say it. <laughs> so, <laughs> listen, let me teach you something about politics right here. What we learned in the last couple of years, you need to like tell everybody you're the greatest thing since sliced bread. I did it. It's all about me. You were the David Bowie band. Like you, it was, it was the Alan Childs band. It was all about you. Without them, you would be, they would be nothing. You mean like Trump? Exactly. That's what I'm trying but, uh, to say. Like, <laughs> but, but around the same time, I got a call from an office saying, "Hey, there's a new artist. Uh, your name came up. We'd like you." to come to the office and listen to the new record that's coming out in two weeks. Uh, well, he's going on tour and we need a drummer. You're highly recommended. Can you please come by and check it out? And I went, okay, I will. And, and I was on 57th Street in New York in one of the high rise office buildings and I walk in and it's this guy, Jim Steinman, who's a, a writer, piano player. He introduces himself and he goes, hey, Alan, uh, I think Eddie Martinez, somebody recommended me. And, Sit down, you know, and, and he, I want, I'm going to play you a song and tell me what you think. Okay. I and, see problems already. And <laughs> in the corner is a guy, kind of very heavy set, blonde hair, and uh, he goes, Oh, Alan, uh, I'd like you to meet Meat. I go, hey, Meat. Meat. How are you doing? Is that his name, Meat? <laughs> meat, yeah. So, uh, hey, Meat. And, uh, Still I sit down, good. he plays me the oh, first no. he sit, plays me the first <laughs> song on side one oh, and I listen sad. and he goes it, it ends, he picks it was a record actually. He picked the needle up and he goes, What'd you think? I go, Man, the guitar solo was great. Who was that? He goes, Oh, that's Todd Rudgren, he produced it. Oh, yeah, I love Todd. He goes, What do you think of the vocals? I went, sounds like Harry Chapin trying to sing rock. <laughs> oh my God. And at that point, <laughs> oh my God. at that point, Jim Steinman stands up <laughs> and he goes, Alan, it's nice to meet you. <laughs> he just sent you out. <laughs> oh my God. And then, of course, I put it together uh, that guy, Meat. The Meat Loaf album's coming out. Oh, okay. He's the singer. He's the singer. <laughs> uh, oh, no. All right, so then you're driving down the street in, what, Brooklyn at the time? Yeah, I don't know, but that and, was the biggest record at and, that and Yeah, and you hear, what, two out of three ain't <laughs> bad yeah. paradise by the dashboard lane. Yeah, <laughs> you know, I, and to this day, I don't regret it, you know. Really? Yeah. Oh, come on. Not at all. Sir, really? Because all roads led to wherever they led to, which was a great place, and I was happier. But uh, if you fast forward a year or two, maybe, um, with Julian Lennon in, in Australia, we're in Sydney, Australia, and we're at their equivalent of the MTV Mo Music Awards show, and there's Meat Loaf. <laughs> oh, <laughs> God. <laughs> Did he say hi to and, you? And I said to the guys in the band, God, I don't want to see him. Block, block me. Block oh, my me. God. <laughs> <laughs> we were honest. Yeah. Can't say you weren't honest. Yeah. I mean, I don't think he had a great voice either. Yeah, he has. I think he, people liked him because of the genre of his music. Yeah. It was edgy, and, you know, who wouldn't like that song? What's it? Dashboard. I can see all yeah, guys was, relating to that. I didn't even know what that meant. I uh -huh. have no idea what that meant. Well, you were like 12. Well, you told me that one. What's the other one? Was that the one? Yeah, probably. Where it's a lead up to them having s s sex and all that. Yeah. That's, yeah, he yeah, told me. I didn't whole, even know that's what it was Going about. to first, yeah. to second, yeah. to third. Yeah, first I base. didn't have any clue yeah, what first that was base. You got the first base. Yeah. And I was that, like, that okay, was great. I don't know what they're talking about, but I guess everybody... <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so we're pretty lucky, right? Like, well, you're luckier than me. At, at your age, you've been around, like, the best musicians ever, right? Everything's got its golden age, so to speak. Mm -hmm. And I think we were talking about this at the gym. Who I haven't seen you at the gym in a while lately. He's going I'm to, at another gym. That's, going to that's right. Yeah. He's going to we, we, another gym sponsors us. You can't tell me. <laughs> <that. laughs> yeah, but you know what? It's, you know, he's Edit that. Hours. <laughs> the hours. The hours are better for Alan. Yeah, that's that's true. So. No, it, it makes sense. It makes sense. I'm just saying I haven't seen him in a while. I hate yeah, to yeah. say it, but I think a lot of people from our gym is going over there in the mornings because it's better. How much do we have to the edit? Hours. <laughs> We're sponsored by a different gym. Stop it. City Athletic Gym is awesome, people. 
<laughs> I loved it. I loved it there. <laughs> so my point is, is that I don't see Alan much anymore, and I don't really have a lot of people I like to talk to. <laughs> Let's be honest. I know. I miss you seeing you on the the treadmill. He'd go on. Ding, 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 no ding, more treadmill ding, for me. Or the elliptical sometimes. Elliptical I'd sometimes. Scope, I scope you out on the elliptical. Right. And like, hey, there he is. So, yeah, I miss seeing you guys at the gym, but like, uh, I, you gotta do your own jam. You gotta yeah. do it. Yeah. It works for you. Yeah, no, it working. makes sense. So one of the things we talk about all the time is music, <laughs> obviously. And like you said, everything has its golden age. And so we were kind of talking, like, if you take a list of the people that you really love, most of them are from... 60s. 60s, right? So we're looking at the 60s, like, say, 62 to... 65-ish? No, no, no. 65, 66 to 72. Okay. So let's take uh, The Who, Rolling Stones, Led Zeppelin. A lot the, of British. Did I say The Beatles? No, Kinks, uh, Eric Clapton. They're all from where, right? England. England. Yeah. So they're all from England. Yes, it, but I do love a lot of American artists. And I yeah. and before the British invasion, I was listening to Dion and the Belmonts, uh, Gene Chandler, Duke of Earl, The Four Seasons. You know, I was already hooked. Yeah. But it's just that when the British thing came, for some reason that attracted it's, me. That I guess maybe that's what made me realize that, whoa, whoa, I think that's what I could do. You know, listening to Dion and the Belmonts and and the Four Seasons, I would just be appreciating it and loving music, and obsessed with it. But when the British thing happened, I think, and I was a little older at that point, I realized that wait a minute, I could be in a band with three or four other guys, <laughs> and like, I bet you it's like a family because my family mm -hmm. life wasn't really yeah. happening, and I was like, wow, they're probably like best friends and. <laughs> It's like a family, and they're playing, and they're making the great no, songs, yeah. you know. And so, the British thing really hit hit me hard, huh. you know, in a good way. It's like it, the Dion and the Belmonts. Stuff like, that was more towards the vocals. Yeah. Right. And, and so I appreciated that as much as I yeah. appreciate Eric Clapton's playing. Hmm. So if we take classic rock of today, which is basically really '60s British music, in a sense. Right, like Pink Floyd, even we could add them. That there's some others. So I was trying to think, well, what do they all have in common? You know, tr from a psychological point of view too, which I, I don't really see that much written over the years. But I was really thinking about this a lot, especially after the election, <laughs> right? Because really great things can spring from people's, let's say, pain or, or change. So number one, they're all from England. England is about the size of Alabama. So how is it that all these great bands that have lasted like 50 years now, or, you know, let's say, you know died out, but their music has lasted that long, and they're from a small, little, teeny, tiny place. The other thing that they have in common is all the major players were born between 41 and 1945 in England. So I'm trying to put this together of, what would make them so resistant or resilient and have this way that they can look at the world in such a, an incredible way at such a young age mm -hmm. when they started? You want to know the answer I came up with? I'd like to hear it. World War II. I was just going to say that. See, yeah. yeah. Because no. they experienced the bombings, the air raids. Exactly. The Nobody wants to talk about this, yeah. but it's so important. And I gave John some pictures. Maybe he can put them up while we're talking, you know, when we do the show later with <laughs> the video Pink but the Pink Floyd the wall it's another one it's Tommy Tommy when you look at Tommy it's about military it starts off with it the absolute trauma Pink Floyd trauma and if you looked at the hospitals in England they really didn't exist they were broken buildings there's pictures of like hospital beds with like breaks through the ceiling and they're trying to like deliver babies and stuff it's a it's like an amazingly crazy thing mm -hmm. and there's people delivering milk right and they're stepping over rocks and pieces and these kids trying to go to school and i was thinking about this like so let's say mick jagger's born in like 1942 the end of the uh the 
the uh, Nazi, the, the German Blitz was like in 1941. So literally his parents or his mother was pregnant during the bombing, which was like every day, every other day. Think about how the mother was scared, agitated, you know, death is looming around the corner, all the hormones going through her body, and then being born under those circumstances. It's the really a very strange thing that I, I don't see enough people really going back and talking to because the golden age of, of that real music that's going to last 50, 60 years, it'll last 100 years from now, really. It was based off of a bunch of children that were born during the Blitz. Right? You ever think it's about true. that? Yeah, I have. I mean, they would, to rubble, I mean, Peter Townsend talked about that too, about yeah. the who was a manifestation of destroying equipment, having sound to destroy people's ears. Like, that makes total sense to me. Mm -hmm. You know, even though you see uh, Keith Richards now, and they're like, wow, that guy could last through a nuclear war. Well, he did. <laughs> <laughs> he did. And another strange thing is, too, in, in England, if I, somebody could check me on this, but I believe this is, if I'm wrong, it's only by about a year. But up until 1954, which is about say, 12, 13 years after these guys were born, there was food rationing in England. So they couldn't even just go, hey, I, I want a couple of steaks. Like they, they, they were being rationed food all the way through their formative years, mm -hmm. you know, grade mm -hmm. school, junior high. And I, I think that's just an amazing thing. Of that, that's where all that maybe that writing comes from. But what do you think? You're a musician. Uh, I think that's for sure why all the British came over here, and I used to go, and my friends. Look how skinny they are! <laughs> <laughs> they look like sticks. Like, do they eat? <laughs> They're used to food rationing. Yeah, I mean, it all makes sense now. <laughs> and, and, and you see some of the British that moved over here, and they're kind of like, you know, well, yeah, yeah like, wouldn't you? you know, it's like, yeah. <laughs> let me give me another burger. But uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. That I, I I thought about that about World War Two because actually when I was doing the Who's Tommy Broadway show, right, a whole big scene with. Uh, Planes bombing oh, yeah. England and uh, parachutes come down on the stage. They had a great, yeah, a I saw it, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, so there is, you're right about the connection. Uh, I, I couldn't uh, explain anything more about it. But, uh, yeah, so that's what I, I came with up you. with. From, uh, so yeah. I'm thinking, you know, through a lot of pain, destruction, a lot of good things that can come out of that. Like, how many, I mean, you would know this, how many really good musicians would you say came out of? say a really well-to-do family from Beverly Hills <laughs> no I mean you know yeah. like you would have access to the best equipment the best amps the best drums the best guitar but what do they have in their soul mm -hmm. to, to play yeah uh, yeah that's that's true it's yeah. probably not that many yeah yeah uh, and it's another thing that's funny about the British uh, I don't remember the name of the city where Led Zeppelin most of the Zeppelin guys grew up uh, Bonham and, Pl and Plant but just recently I was reading that there's like four or five other huge British bands that came from the same area hmm. as Bonham and Plant. Yeah, I don't know the city. I didn't but look that, that one up. But I found that amazing. But um, also, like the beginning of heavy metal, right? The the making of that, would, people would say would be Black Sabbath. It's Birmingham. I think it's, Is I, it? It's I think Birmingham. that's it. Yeah, so you have, okay, so let's put, I'm not sure, we'll put a thing, maybe Led Zeppelin from Birmingham? No? But uh, uh, Led... Plant, uh, plant and... Sounds like no. Yeah. Over we can look that up on the fly here, maybe. He's like, no. Jones. But we've got... Uh, Steppenwolf. Steppenwolf. Steppenwolf is another Steppenwolf one? Steppenwolf was the beginning of heavy metal. Mm -hmm. Oh, you want to go with Steppenwolf? All right, we'll go with that. But <laughs> most people would say Black Sabbath. USA. USA, okay. And then we also had a Judas Priest from Birmingham. Oh, really? from the USA. I didn't know that. So they all seem to yeah, sprout out of this whole Who was USA? thing. Yeah. Oh, Stephen. Mm. Okay. Magic Carpet Ride. That was a good song. That was a good song. Yeah. So do you want to go to a, a little break? Was that sexual too? That was probably another one. I don't know. I think probably it was. was. I think they all were. Yeah. They had like a, a double <laughs> meaning. Every song is. It's always something. <laughs> well, I know the old blues songs are, aren't they? 
I'm also. I mean, they were trying to like you know get it they through the code words. Yeah. The code words. Hmm. I got too, my mojo that? working. I got my mojo. <laughs> my mojo. <laughs> <laughs> so speaking of uh, golden age, I want to play a song by uh, David Bowie. And obviously, you play the drums for him. It's a song called uh, "Golden Years." Mm -hmm. Do you want to? Mm. Have you played that live? I've you want to tell us about that? that? No. You never played that one Not live. Not that song. No. No. All right. He played that on the tour before me. They played "Golden." Years. Wow, they didn't play that on the Glass Spider. You know, tour. they didn't play a lot of songs on. Uh, and originally, mm. Glass Spider was all obscure songs, mm. and just Bowie fans would really get it. Huh. But after we did the first two cities, he said, you know, maybe this isn't working. <laughs> uh, so he called a rehearsal in Ireland, which was the next city coming up. And we learned like five biggies, hmm. the big, big Bowie tunes like Rebel yeah. Rebel. Right, right. You know, and, Rebel uh, Rebel. Yeah, <laughs> China Girl. Like, I don't remember which five, Girl. but... Um, Gene Genie, for sure. Oh, yeah. No, that was great. Yeah, and that changed the whole show. Hmm. It made it better. So, because you're one of the very few in the whole world that had this experience, what is it like to sit back there and you're looking up and there's like, I don't know, 50,000 people with all these lights, and you got David Bowie's back, and then you look on the other side and you had Peter Frampton. What, 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 tell me about that. <laughs> yeah, that is amazing. Hmm. Hmm. Uh, what's even more amazing is uh, back then we did not have in-ear headphones. You heard the mix of the band with while you're mm -hmm. playing. We had monitors in back of us. So what I essentially, for the, especially for the stadiums, I had like a, a mini PA system behind me <laughs> that would fill a club here. Oh my wow. gosh. And I would have the, the whole band in my speakers <laughs> And at the level I requested, like, uh, could you make Peter a little lower, uh, make the kick drum louder? You know, I'd had my own mix behind me. Hmm. And I have to say, the first show was in Brussels. And when I, I mean, we've all been, already been rehearsing for, for a month, and we did the press tour earlier. And, but this first night, the opening night in Brussels, and David started to sing, and I heard him in my speakers. I was like, wow. It was like one of those moments. Like, That's awesome. Am I here? I'm hearing Bowie sing. And he's right there, and yeah. I'm hearing him. And it, like, it, you know, it was really very quick, like yeah. a couple seconds. Yeah. But, you know, when I think about it now, it's like, it sounds like it was like 10 minutes. Ten minutes. <laughs> so, but, how do you replace that high for the rest of your life? How drugs. do you? <laughs> no. Marijuana is legal number now. Two. <laughs> oh, yes, number two, we did. So. <laughs> so uh, kids who are listening, <laughs> no. <laughs> Edit no. that. No, no, no. no, no. All you um, try this at home. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, <laughs> children, please go into your parents' pocketbooks and purses and pants pocket and whatever money you find just <laughs> yeah. su soupy say right right that's a soupy <laughs> sales trick but uh yeah yeah but seriously is it um is it difficult to recapture that like you ever walk down the street and you're going wow um like you want to get some I, of that back do you yeah. miss it you know yeah yeah well fortunately i continued to work even to this day and right. uh, you know some of the gigs I've done since Bowie have not been stadiums but uh, theaters and mm. you know I don't that I just was always happy to be playing my drums awesome I, so I, in the end it's yeah, yeah. It, I feel fortunate just for that the fact that I make a living playing music mm -hmm. uh, yeah that's a great memory and yeah. that was an amazing right. experience, of course, but uh, that's, that's awesome. It's an experience so I'll always remember. Introduce the David Bowie song for us, Golden Years. Go ahead. All right, it's David Bowie with uh, Carlos Alomar on guitar, and it's Golden Years. Yeah, yeah. 
you say lights taking you nowhere Life's begun, lights are warm and the days are young That's my favorite lost but so And you looked in time Never looked back Walk tall Act fine Welcome back to the Rise Above Show, formerly from Grief to Relief. I'm Joe Peroni. Heidi Mancini. And <coughs> I'm Alan Child. So can you do like a drum roll on the table? <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, there you go. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> So, <laughs> were you born with like that ability where you could do something with the right hand and then you'd move them with the left hand, like independent? Independence, yeah, ambidextrous. And yeah, can, can you? <laughs> so I'm going to yeah, make Alan do this. Can you do the? Oh, <laughs> no. let, let's try it. Can you have to go tap and then circle? Oh, you can't do it. There's no way. Oh, you're doing it. Yeah. All right. I'm doing it. Yeah. So there's I don't a, know if I can do it there was well. a book uh, <laughs> when I did start to learn how to read music. There was a book by uh, I think it was Jim Chapin, hmm. who's Harry Chapin's dad. Oh, okay. Um, Who sounds like Meatloaf trying to be uh, a rock band? No. <laughs> and um, he was a great teacher, Jim Chapin. And his book was about total independence. Hmm. And so you can teach that. He, yeah, whether you could learn it. Is another story, but you, you can oh, someone can way. try to teach it. There's a way to to practice it. Wow, and perfect it. There okay. is a way. That's awesome. Yeah. So uh, I remember that book. Yeah, that was a great huh. book. Very cool. So your show that you're playing in now, Rock of Ages. Rock of Ages. What what is going on with that show? Well, you know, we have been pretty much packed for the past few months, and. Uh, last month we got our notice you know no, no show lasts forever I've been doing this for years yeah I've done tons of Broadway shows and 
there's always an end. Right. They, all of them end. Uh, even if they're still selling. Hmm. They end for some reason. Uh, this, this time I don't understand why we're closing. Uh, we're not getting straight answers from the company we work with, but we're closing January 1st. Uh, we're sold out every night. Hmm. And either someone's not making money or someone wants more money, like the producers, the original producers that have a cut. They might be seeing we're doing great in Vegas, and the original deal is the, they want to up the ante now. They want a bigger cut. But we're closing January 1st, and uh, we had a great run. I've been doing it six years. That's hmm. the longest I've done any Broadway show. Oh. So we're friends. How does this affect? I would rather it keep going a little longer, yeah. But there's a part of me that's a little relieved. Really? Yeah. But you don't want to play Bon Jovi every night. <laughs> yeah. You sing a Bon Jovi. That's pretty much. That's pretty much the reason. I mean, uh, you gotta get sick of playing the same stuff every single night. Every how many nights do you play? Uh, six nights. There was a point we were playing every night. That would get mm. boring. That'd be doing the same haircut over and over again. After a yeah, while, I'd be like, yeah. oh, my God, can I do a different haircut yeah. already here? But, but I do try and change it up occasionally, you know. Yeah. I, but in general, I think, you know, it's time, hmm. you know. So what are you going to do with your time? He's going to work on his social media. Uh, yeah, you can, yes. Somebody got to help We're going to help him with his social media. I'm going to come over and help you, Alan. <laughs> so you get, that, get things going. Yeah. I'm serious. Uh -huh. I'm going to help you out. Uh, whatever comes next, you know, I, that's one thing about being a professional musician in this part of the business where things end, yeah. um, you just don't ever know. It's a new uh, beginning. Yeah, you know, it could be uh, another show in Vegas, it could be a little tour with somebody, or, and if at this point in my life, I mean, you know, I'm not 30 years old anymore, yeah. uh, I could chill. I could chill and do things that I've always wanted to do, like recording. So you're good. You, know, that I you don't you don't have to play if you don't want I, to. Yeah. Yeah. I could I could chill if I want, but I'm not really ready to chill. Mm. But if uh, I had to and I had no choice, I I'll I'll but be. But you fine. you settled here now. Yeah, I love That's it here. You're... I love it yeah. here. Mm. So have you ever settled anywhere uh, in your in your life with all these tours? Uh, I, I spent some time in New Jersey, um, but in general, I've been on the road. And yeah. this is the first time in years that I'm in one place. Hmm. And I go to the same supermarket, and the people know me, and the same I gas know, I station. See you walk, I see you walking all the time. I walk the dogs. You can roll and buy in your truck. And I'm like, hey, Ellen. I don't see you anymore because you moved out. You moved yeah. to a different area. Yeah. So we only have about 30 seconds. But it, Tell us really quick about, you have to learn how to do hellos and goodbyes with people much more than, let's say, the average person like me. Like, I have trouble with it, you know? Like, I even have difficulty when you text me or something and go, listen, man, I'm going to a different gym. I'm like, oh, <laughs> I'll never see him again. You know, how do you deal with it going to, like, country to country to, you know, I'll uh -huh. be back in a year and a half? Yeah, yeah. Does it get easier? Uh, it's not that it gets easier, but you get used to it. Get used to you it. actually get used to it just like you get used to everything brushing your teeth and then you get used to it it's just you know when you go into a city even if it's for like three months uh, you know it's temporary right and you do the best you could you know you make friends and you could try and just stay in touch you know we have it's different now we have internet and texting and you could keep in touch with the people you really want to but uh, in the beginning, it was a little yeah, weird yeah, trying to get used to it. Tough. Before texting and all that in the 80s, uh, it took a, a bit of getting used to. Mm. Well, I hope everything comes out okay for you. Oh, well, thank you. And uh, I want to thank you for being here today. It's always fun. My pleasure. <laughs> so this is the Rise Above Show. I am Joe Peroni. Heidi Mancini. And, and Childs. Thank you. My pleasure. <laughs>